What's going on, everybody? Doc, Average Gamer Guys, back yet again. More Escape from Tarkov action. And jumping into another episode of our Teaching Tarkov series. So it's been a little hiatus from this, but I uh, want to continue to do these videos in hopes that they can help some of you that are a little bit newer or maybe jumping back into Tarkov. Today, what we're going to be talking about is weapon modifications. Um, this is going to be a little bit daunting since there's so much customization so much that you can do in Tarkov and really don't get any <laughs> help in figuring this out uh, from the game. And that is Tarkov sometimes, pretty much all the time. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump in. I'm going to talk about what you need in order to start weapon modding and then talk about the different ways that you can go about doing that. Uh, talk through some tips and some things that I find helpful. Uh, in addition, some of the precursor things in order to get you to the point where you can weapon mod. Uh, and then talk about the things that you probably want to focus on if you're starting to get into weapon modification. You probably see a lot of videos from other folks, and I know I've done some talking about the meta builds, the best way to get lowest recoil, uh, highest ergonomics, those different kinds of things. So we'll touch on that a little bit in this video as well. So without further ado, let's jump in talk about some weapon modding all right the first thing and the first place i want to start is actually going to be in the hideout in order to start or have the ability to even mod your weapons in the first place you need to upgrade your hideout to the point where you can get workbench level one now there are three levels of workbench and you're going to notice that when you craft this the first time you're going to have a select things just like everything or most other things in the hideout which gives you some options to be able to make some make some ammos make some gunpowders do some different things uh, and that's all well good and important however it is important to note that the first level of workbench actually unlocks your ability to go in and actually mod your weapons so make sure that you do that in addition, and while this isn't necessarily exactly needed, it is important and you should probably think about waiting to get into any kind of crazy weapon modifications until at this point after level 15. Why do I say that? That opens up the flea market. It used to be 20, level 15 of the, as of the making of this video, that could change based on the wipe. We're currently in 12.11, um, so just do keep that in mind. Here's why I recommend having the flea market open. What you're going to see is, is that when we get into weapon modifications, a lot of the modifications that you're probably gonna to wanna to buy, one of two things is going to be true. One, you're gonna have a very limited amount of things that you can pick from uh, if you don't have the flea market open. If you have the flea market open, then you can go to the market and you can buy pretty much anything that you wanna be able to get, uh, obviously as long as somebody is selling it on the flea market. If you don't have the flea market open, when you go to do your weapon modifications, you'll be limited to your traders. If you are a lower level and under level 15 at this point, you probably don't have traders that are very high, maybe a couple of them to level two, but I think skier, mechanic, uh, the big ones that sell a lot of the uh, attachments that you're gonna look for are going to be higher level traders anyways. So strongly recommend you get to level 15, get your workbench upgraded before you even really dabble in this. You can certainly do a few small things, um, but uh, I think your best weapon modification is going to come after you have both of those things complete. Now let's talk about how you can go about doing this. There are really two ways. Uh, I'm gonna call one the most simple and effective way, and the other method is if you are just looking to take either a current existing weapon that has some good modifications and upgrade it a little bit more to your liking, or if you have a very specific attachment uh, or thing that you're looking for, the best ways to find it. Uh, I'm gonna start with the latter first because I think it is um, very useful on a small, small scale. Uh, and then, you know, again, if you're starting with a very base gun, uh, the second option that I'll cover is gonna be much more efficient and effective for you. So what am I talking about here? So you have a couple of different options and you have to really kind of know how to use both the flea market uh, for this second method uh, in order to get the best value out of it. So as we talked about, there's a lot that you can weapon mod. Uh, there's a lot of different types of attachments. There are barrel attachments, there are pistol grips, there's stocks, there's chassis, there's obviously a ton of different sights. Uh, on top of those barrel modifications, you can do a lot of different things there. There are four grips, lights and lasers. There's a ton. There is an absolute massive, massive amount uh, of items. What I wanna show you here up front is if you have a specific attachment 
Uh, and I'm going to use this Cobra site as an example. What this Cobra site does is it attaches to this SKS uh, and it allows you to put an optic on top. Let's say I don't have this optic. Okay, let's say this optic is not on top of this weapon uh, and I want to find a way to get an optic to put it on. All I can simply do is I can go and I can go. You have a couple of different item, uh, search items here. I'll cover really quick. Filter by item. These, all of these things are going to take you to the flea market. Filter by item is going to find this exact same item on the flea market. This is really valuable if you have a weapon that's built that you've modded really well uh, and you want to just replicate it very quickly. You can go in and you can filter by the items and you can purchase a few of them. So that's really helpful. Link search is where I'm going to show you where it provides you with everything else that can go on top of or in conjunction with that item. This is an extremely helpful and useful feature. Again, if you're looking for like only one or two things and you want to find something specifically that is going to fit that specific attachment. Required search can be helpful sometimes, but this is more so if you're looking for a barter trade. Required search is going to help you to be able to do that, and you'll see if it's required for any of the barter trades uh, that you can make. So we're going to start, and we're going to go with link search here, because again, we'll remember, we're trying to find something that is going to fit on that Cobra mount specifically. Now you have a couple of drop down options here. Obviously, you can find weapons that this is going to attach to, which is a pretty useful feature. More importantly, you can find additional mounts. So let's say we wanted to put like a Leopold scope on it. We would look for our uh, either the 25, I think we need the 30 millimeter. Maybe we can't get a 30 millimeter base here, um, but you're basically going to be able to find a bunch of different options uh, for you to be able to throw on top of this. Now, obviously, these are not sights and we're looking for one of those specifically. You also can, with this specific mount, put a laser on the side of it so you can see that we can search by that. Uh, but let's say we just want an assault scope. Let's say we want an LCAN, and maybe we know that up front. Maybe we really prefer this site. Then we'll be able to come here and we'll be able to find it. If you're not too familiar with the flea market, just understand that traders also are included with this. You can uh, do a lot of different search features here and move things around. If you only want to see things by traders, you can do that. If you want to see things from everybody, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, you can sort, sort by this highest to lowest if you want to do that. I, uh, I definitely recommend sorting by lowest, <laughs> uh, which most people do. But this is, again, a really useful feature. I'll go back and show it again. It's a really useful feature if you just simply want to find something uh, that is going to just add on to the attachment that you have. Now, you can build a gun completely this way. You can take this, uh, for instance, this SKS, and you could search. You could pull everything off of it and search from just the base gun. And you can start adding things and then search from that point. Uh, the nice part about this again, and I'll do this link search really quick to show you is, let's say you wanted to put this mount on it, uh, but you're like, I don't know if I have the site. Inside of the flea market, you can then go and you can link search from there and find the additional things that will fit on top of that. So it'll be able to show you that, okay, this Trijicon site fits on that mount that we just found. If you want to reverse that, you can link search and you can find the different types of mounts that will go on uh, and so on and so forth. So link search is an extremely useful tool uh, and it's gonna help you again, navigate specifically the flea market or find the item uh, that you want, probably uh, a lot faster and a lot more efficient um, if you have just those things that you need. Now, that is again, under the assumption that you already have a weapon that you've modded and maybe you're looking for just one or two attachments that you know you want to throw on. Sights are a great op, uh, great thing to talk about with that. In addition to foregrips, foregrips are really useful. Again, we could go to the stock on this. We could go link search. Let's say we didn't have a foregrip on there. We can go right into foregrips and bam, we're going to be able to see all of them and be able to use them. Again, you're seeing how effective and, and beneficial having the flea market open at this point is to being able to do this. So please just do keep that in mind. The second option uh, and are arguably the better option, especially if you are modding a base level gun, is to come in to here and go to edit preset. Now you can do a lot of other things in this weapon menu. You can certainly repair things. You can do other things when it comes to weapon. But the cool part with this is, is this is going to give you all of the options. And again, I strongly recommend using this option to mod your weapons if you have a very base level gun, or let's say you pull a gun off somebody else and you don't don't like the build, you don't like any of the attachments they have, you can take that gun, you can go into uh, this weapon preset, and you can start 
building your weapon from there. Now, this is relatively self-explanatory, but I'll cover some key things um, that uh, are important to note. This is going to dynamically change as you add or remove different things, and it is going to show you exactly what you can put on those different options. So again, going with uh, this Cobra site, if we were to take this off, it obviously removes all of the sites and things that we already had attached, right? Um, so that's pretty cool. If we're go and we'll put that back on here, you're gonna see that not only do we get a laser, laser option uh, for something to include there, we are also going to get back into our menu, to be able to see all of the different options. Again, a strong recommendation here is to not mess around with this too much because if you throw something on here, let's say this compact mount, and you don't have the flea market open, when you go to build this, you're going to run into a trouble because you're not going to be able to purchase the item. So again, strongly recommend that you have the flea market for this. But as you can see here, this is pretty, I don't want to say self-explanatory, but it's pretty easy uh, to maneuver, pretty easy uh, to put some different things on if you want to build your gun out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this down pretty much bare bones. You can pull everything off of this if you want and basically show that you'll start with nothing and uh, we can start building this gun from here. So really cool uh, is that uh, this would be the base of our SKS. We can start with the stock, which is obviously very, very important. We can start with maybe mix it up here a little bit, start with a stock that we don't have. Uh, we'll go in, it gives all of our options for our pistol grips. The cool part too is if you extend this info tab here, it's gonna show you what all of the different things are going to do to your weapon. So for an SKS build, as an example for myself, I like to have a pretty high ergonomic build. Recoil is important. Uh, and this is certainly dependent by, by the type of weapon that you're using. Recoil is certainly important and a stat that I'm going to pay attention to, but more so for an SKS since it's a single semi-auto, single shot weapon, uh, I'm going to find something that has some pretty, guy, pretty high ergonomics. I'm going to be able to pull up pretty quickly, engage my target, and hopefully hit a couple of my shots uh, and not be a complete nub. But as you see, you're going to be able to scroll across and see the different the differences for the things that you're going to attach. Now, it's not going to be a comparison between two items. It's going to be what equipping that or attaching that uh, that item to that weapon is going to do for its statistics. So for instance, this saw style uh, pistol grip, which I think is what we had on there before, added 11 ergonomics. Now, if we have something in that slot and we choose to go to something else, you're going to be able to see uh, that it is going to show you the difference. So if we were to take this AK-12 pistol grip, you can see that in comparison to the saw that we have attached currently, it is going to drop it uh, by three ergonomics. It's not going to have any other base weapon changes. Um, and we can see minus five there, plus one here. What this allows you to do is if you really want to go to like a Supreme build or, or get closer to a meta build, it'll allow you to really compare two different things, which can be a little bit hard just using the flea market or a link search option. Uh, you'll learn as you go what items just generally are better, but it does give you a good opportunity to see, okay, what do we really wanna throw on this thing to get the most bang for our buck? Let's say we put the Scorpius on there, which we certainly can. Then we can start comparing this to everything else in this category to see, is this the best in slot item? So very, very helpful feature. Again, if you're really looking to get into your weapon mods, you have a ton of money, you have the flea market open, this is really, really going to help you uh, to be able to do that. Now, again, if we wanna keep going with this, let's say we wanna put a mount on, that's our only option here. We can start looking at the different options that we have. We can put this mount on, and then we can see what is it gonna allow us to do. We can put this different type of optic on. And again, anything that you roll through here is going to show you the different adjustments that those things are going to make, which is, which is again, a really beneficial feature. You can really throw some crazy things on here um, and do some, do some interesting things uh, with this build. Again, we can show what the different magazines are going to be, uh, how we're going to build this thing out. You can move this around. If you want to look at uh, just only certain things, you can go. Uh, and I talked about only using available parts. What's interesting here, so you can check these different things across the board. You can go vital parts only or remove that. So blue is vital parts, functional mods. Uh, they're in what we'll call white and then gear mods are the things that are highlighted in green. Those are just different classifications that you can work through. 
You can also go and click only usable parts. And what this will do is actually only show you the things that you have in your inventory to be able to use. That's a really helpful feature if you don't have the flea market open, but let's say you have a bunch of weapon attachments. It is important to note that this will pull these things from other guns. So uh, when you're building this out, let's say you have another build and you don't wanna steal from that one, be careful to check or uncheck only usable parts. So obviously we don't wanna do that. We have the flea market open. We'll continue to build this thing out. You can move this around as you so see fit. Uh, and again, we can throw different things on here. We can just mod the ever living crap out of this. We could put two optics on if we want. It is important to note too. Uh, so in here, especially with barrel attachments, there are a lot of barrel attachments where you have thread adapters or different types of adapters that you can then throw something else on. In addition, we could just put a sound suppressor on here. So we could put the suppressor on and you see what that looks like. Now, if we were to take this and we were to put this thread on here, it gives us some additional options for some things that we can throw on instead. We can put a different suppressor. Obviously, we can put a different type of barrel mod on there. And obviously, it will have some pretty significant changes when it comes to uh, what we're doing here. So that's pretty nice. But this is, again, the most efficient, the most effective way to come in, mess around with your things, mess around with your weapon setups, mess around with the different items, see how you like to build your guns, uh, the different things to focus on. I talked about... Uh, at the intro to this, what do you want to focus on? I think a nice balance of ergonomics and recoil is going to be important. Now, with that being said, recoil is certainly more important on weapons that are fully automatic or you intend to use fully automatic, um, comparative to, in my opinion, weapons that are semi-automatic, where I think ergonomics is more important. The single shot weapon, you certainly want to have some decent recoil. You don't want it to be jumping too crazy. But your ability to engage the target, get your weapon up, uh, and be able to actually aim is what ergonomics impacts. And so having a higher ergonomics with a semi-auto weapon is going to be, in my opinion, way more important. Fully automatic, you want to find a nice balance. You can have a great recoil reduction, but if your ergonomics is like two, it's going to take you forever to aim that weapon, uh, which will also get you killed. So keep, in, keep a look at those specific stats. You don't have to pay too much attention to weight, obviously. Um, accuracy isn't going to change drastically, um, but really your vertical, your horizontal recoil, and your ergonomics are the big things. When it comes to actual weapon modding, the things that are going to have the most impact to that in general are going to be, and that are easy to change, is going to be your pistol grip. You saw that you can do quite a bit of different things here. Typically, it's more from an ergonomics standpoint than it is from an accuracy or recoil standpoint, but that isn't always true. Um, your, uh, your stock here is also very important and, and can do a lot of different things. Uh, with this specific stock, it has a fixed butt stock on it uh, and buffer tube, but your buffer tube and your butt stock are also hugely important, especially for a recoil reduction standpoint, uh, as well as not limiting your ergonomics too much. The other thing that I would highlight the most that is going to have a huge impact is obviously any type of barrel mods that you put on. Different barrels, depending on the gun, will also have some pretty significant things. The longer the barrel, typically, the better its recoil, but the worse its ergonomics is going to be. So just keep that in mind. But your barrel attachments after that are going to have some really, really significant changes uh, to this. So right now you can see that we're at 84 and 184 with an SRV, which is pretty solid and 41 ergonomics. If we were instead to change that, you can see how throwing a suppressor on uh, had some pretty significant impacts to that. Obviously ergonomics are gonna drop uh, and they penalize you pretty heavily in this game for using a suppressor. Although I would strongly recommend it as it is pretty good. It also had some impacts to the recoil here uh, that you can see as well. So barrel, your stock, uh, your buffer tube and your butt stock and your pistol grip are going to have some pretty significant adjustments when it comes to trying to mod out your weapons. So those are important things to keep in mind. In addition, different sites do have just different ergonomics. So do keep that in mind. Your bigger sites, especially your uh, anything that's thermal is really going to, to hit you. Uh, your longer range optics uh, do certainly have a ergonomic impact. So uh, Bravo is a pretty good, nice 3X sight comparatively um you can certainly get some additional advantages if you go for a smaller type optic 
especially when it comes to your ergonomics. Although that is balanced, obviously, with your ability to see and uh, have a magnified scope to go long range. So do keep those things uh, in mind. So hopefully this was a, a nice, helpful tip. The last thing I will finish is, let's say you get to a build that you like. The beautiful part about weapon presets are you can do a couple of different things. One, you can save this. So if you really like this build, you can come in, you can type SKS meta, and you can save this build for yourself. That way, when you come in to mod this weapon again, all you do is click open and find this one, and then it will preload all of the things that you've already put on there. Very, very, very effective and efficient way if you use one or two or a couple of different weapons specifically uh, with a lot of attachments or you spend the time to do this weapon mod. Very, very helpful to come in to be able to do that. I actually don't know if I have an SKS build. It is important that you try to remember I do. So I could come in and I could do my SKS silenced. I can open it. Yes, I want to do the changes and boom, here we go. We've got all of these things already preloaded. This is how I like this thing built and we're ready to go, which is pretty nice. The other cool thing about doing this is, depending on uh, what you change, or not depending on what you change, but as you change things here and modify things, if you wanna build this, all you have to do is come and hit assemble. And what that is going to do, it is going to show you the parts that you do not have, all right? You can also click uh, and uncheck this if you wanna buy everything straight. This, very similar to use only available parts, is the opposite, which this will essentially allow you to use if you have this checked, it'll use everything that you have in your inventory to apply to that specific weapon build. If you want to buy it all fresh, just uncheck that and you can buy literally every single thing that you've added to this weapon outside again of the base weapon. Um, if we go in and we go buy parts here, what it's going to do is it's going to favor uh, to the traders. If you want to remove that, you can remove that and then potentially find some things that are a little bit cheaper. Sometimes they're more expensive. Uh, so we can take this here and we can essentially purchase. Now, if we were to go purchase all of these things, we would buy everything. You can see that a few of these things are coming from uh, individuals selling them on the flea market. If it becomes not available, what it will do is it'll purchase and then it'll say that that item couldn't be purchased. And then you can go in and get your option uh, to purchase that again. If you wanna go to only traders, you can. Like that and that will shift that back so that everything we're buying here is going to come from the traders as you notice sks for instance you could buy from uh the individual in the flea market a lot cheaper so certainly check around on this uh to make sure you're getting the best value the beautiful part is once you buy all of these things and you click purchase all down there you can come back here you hit assemble again you do have the option let's say i want to assemble this gun but i don't want to put these items on it you can click ignore and it will put everything together once you have all the parts, you click assemble, it will tell you that your weapon has been assembled and you will be good to go and rock and roll. So that's really nice. That's a kind of a down and dirty crash course on weapon modifications. I know there are certain things that I probably didn't cover. And as you get your experience with using this system, you're gonna find that um, there are a lot of quality of life things here, especially again, if you use a couple of different weapons uh, and you wanna save those presets. That is a great way to do it. Very simple, very fast, very quick to be able to put that thing uh, together. And again, you can just click this little, this little button here and it will bring you into the weapon mod screen uh, if you want to do that. So that's pretty cool. Now, if you do click this here, just keep in mind that this is going to just use the things uh, in your inventory to be able to put together. If you want to go and like I said, edit your preset and mess around and build a gun, this is a great way to do that. So I think with that, we're going to go ahead and close this one out. So um, again, hopefully it was helpful for you. Hopefully you got some good, some tips, some tricks that you can use, a couple of different options for uh, if you need to find single weapon attachments or you're working on complete builds in order to get to those meta guns. Uh, we'll close it out just by saying thank you so much. Like, comment, subscribe if it was helpful for you. If you have any questions down below, if there's any specific things that you find helpful with your experience in Tarkov that would be helpful to anybody else checking this video out, certainly throw those down below as well. But hopefully this was a useful guide to you in order to get you into and start doing some of your weapon modifications. If you're ever interested in coming hanging out with us live, we do stream over on Twitch Fridays and Saturdays, 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. That link is in the description. We do randomly throughout the week as well. Also in the description, we have links for our Discord and our Twitter. If you want to stay up to date with our channel, check out our other videos. Some point up in the top right hand of the screen is probably going to flash uh, a, little, uh, a little tag or a little 
a uh, little thing that you can click on. We have a ton of other series on here. So if you found Teaching Tarkov helpful, we have a, a playlist dedicated to that with some weapon uh, weapon guides, some map guides, some other things, uh, barter items, how to do some other things, uh, like, uh, you know, get your uh, get your inventory sorted and alternates for cases and things like that. So be sure to, be sure to check that out. If you're interested, we have a solo playthrough uh, going on called The Escape, where we just take a standard account and run through that how we would progress. In addition, we have hardcore and we do some challenge series as well. So a ton of escape from Tarkov content on the channel. So be sure to pop around, check that out. We do some other games as well. Uh, so hopefully you find something that interests you. But thank you again for stopping in. I've been Doc, Average Gamer Guys, as always. Thanks for watching. And we'll catch you in the next Escape from Tarkov video. Peace.